Sharon could be considered beautiful by almost any standard. With long red hair, sparkling green eyes, and the body of a dancer or a pre-war supermodel, she also has the mind of a four-year-old girl. We are at the Rothman Rehabilitation Home for feral children. Dr. Roberta Kellner, Sharon's caseworker, describes her condition as lucky. At least she has language skills, a cohesive thought process, she explains. It's rudimentary, but at least it's fully functional. Dr. Kellner is eager for the interview, but Dr. Somers, Rothman's program director, is not. Funding has always been spotty for this program, and the present administration is threatening to close it down altogether. Sharon is shy at first. She will not shake my hand, and seldom makes eye contact. Although Sharon was found in the ruins of Wichita, there is no way of knowing where her story originally occurred. We were in church, Mommy and me. Daddy told us that he would come find us. Daddy had to go do something. We had to wait for him in church. Everybody was there. They all had stuff. They had cereal and water and juice and sleeping bags and flashlights and... Miss Randolph had one. She wasn't supposed to. They were dangerous. She told me they were dangerous. She was Ashley's mommy. Ashley was my friend. I asked her where Ashley was. She started to cry. <laughs> mommy told me not to ask her about Ashley and told me Miss Randolph that she was sorry. Miss Randolph was dirty. She had red and brown on her dress. She was fat. She had big, soft arms. There were other kids, Jill and Abby, and other kids. Miss McGraw was watching them. They had crayons. They were coloring on the wall. Mommy told me to go play with them. She told me it was okay. She said Pastor Dan said it was okay. Pastor Dan was there. He was trying to make people listen to him. Please, everyone. She even makes a deep, low voice. Please stay calm. The authorities are coming. Just stay calm and wait for the authorities. No one was listening to him. Everyone was talking. Nobody was sitting. People were trying to talk in their phone things. They were angry at their things, throwing them and saying bad words. I feel bad for Pastor Dan. Wee you, wee you, wee you, wee you, wee you, wee you. Mommy was talking to Miss Cormode and other mommies. They were fighting. Mommy was getting mad. Miss Cormode kept saying, well, what if? What else can you do? Mommy was shaking her head. Miss Cormode was talking with her hands. I didn't like Miss Cormode. She was Pastor Dan's wife. She was bossy and mean. Somebody yelled, here they come. Mommy came and picked me up. They took our bench and put it next to the door. They put all the benches next to the door. Quick, jam the door. She mimics several different noises. I need a hammer, nails. They're in the parking lot. They're coming this way. Turns to Dr. Can I? Dr. Summers looks unsure. Dr. Kellner smiles and nods. I later learned that the room is soundproof for this reason. Sharon mimics the moan of a zombie. They were coming. They came bigger. Again, she moans. <laughs> Then follows by a pounding her right fist on the table. They wanted to come in. Her blows are powerful, mechanical. People screamed. Oh! Mommy, oh! Hug, mommy hug me tight. It's okay. Her voice softens as she begins to stroke her own hair. I won't let them get you. Shh. Now she bangs both fists on the table, her strikes becoming more chaotic, as if to simulate multiple ghouls. Raise the door. Hold it. Hold it! She simulates the sound of shattering glass. The, the window's broke. The window's in the front next to the door. The lights got black. Grown-ups got scared. They screamed. Her voice returns to her mother's. Shh, baby, I won't let them get you. Her hands go from her hair to her face, gently stroking her forehead and cheeks. Sharon gives Kellner a questioning look. Kellner nods. Sharon's voice suddenly simulates the sound of something large breaking. A deep, phlegm-filled rumble from the bottom of her throat. They're coming in! Shoot them! Shoot them! She makes the sound of gunfire! Then... I won't let them get you. I won't let them get you. The children! Don't let them get the children! That was Miss Cormode. Save the children! Save the children! Sharon makes more gunshots. She balls her hands into a large double fist, <laughs> bringing it down hard on an invisible form. Now the kids started crying. <laughs> she 
and moon stabbing, punching, striking with objects. Abby cried hard. <coughs> Miss Cormo picked her up. She mimes lifting something or someone up and swinging them against the wall. <laughs> Abby stopped. She goes back to stroking her own face. Her mother's voice has become harder. Shh. It's okay, baby. It's okay. Her hands move down from her face to her throat, tightening into a strangling grip. I won't let them get you. I won't let them get you. Sharon begins to gasp for air. Dr. Summers makes a move to stop her. Dr. Connor puts his, up a hand. Sharon suddenly ceases throwing her arms out to the sound of a gunshot. Warm and wet. Salty in my mouth. Stinging my eyes and... <sighs> arms picked me up and carried me. She gets up from the table. Mimicking a motion close to a football. Carried me into the parking lot. Run, Sharon! Don't stop, just run! Run, run, run! They pulled her away from me. Her arms let me go. They were big, soft arms. <laughs>